If you were following along with me in the previous lesson, you saw just how easy it is to add artistic text to your page here in Corel Draw. Quite simply, you click the text tool, click on your page, and type. That's all there is to it. Of course, there's a lot of formatting that we can do with artistic text. We're going to cover that in detail in the next lesson. But first, I want to show you another way to add artistic text to your page, but this time have it fit to a path. We call it Fit Text to Path, and we're going to look at a few different methods for doing that. A path could be a shape that you've drawn, a wavy line. It could be an existing object like this ear of corn, for example, if I wanted text flowing around the outside of it. So we're going to do that with this file that we were working with in the previous lesson. If you jump to this lesson and you want to get caught up, go to your exercise files if you've got them, Lesson 5 folder, open up artistictext2.cdr. You'll have what I have. Next, we need a new page, so I'm going to come down here to my navigation buttons. Where I see one of one, I'm going to click on the plus sign just to the right. I've got my new page. I see the content from my template down at the bottom. That's okay. I've got this drawing area here. And next, I want to borrow that artistic text that I've already entered on page one. So I'm going to go to page one and click on this right at the top, artistic text. I'm going to copy it by clicking my copy button. You can do control C or use your edit menu, whichever you prefer. Once it's copied to the Windows clipboard, we can now paste it onto page two. So let's go over to page two, clicking the page two tab. And now I'm going to click on my paste button. Control V is the shortcut. And I'm going to click it again to get a second copy. And now I'm just going to click and drag from the center here to show you I've got two copies of my artistic text. Now all I need is the path that I want to put this text on. So I'm going to start with my ellipse tool. Come over to the ellipse tool here and I'm going to draw an ellipse from over here and down. Nice wide one. And you can see now I've actually got the path that I might want to fit my text to. Maybe outside the ellipse, inside the ellipse. That's totally up to you. And there's a few different ways to do this. So I'm going to go back to my pick tool and I'm going to click on my artistic text, the bottom one here. One way to get it to fit to a path that's already been created is to go up to the text menu. Next, we come down to fit text to path. Now my mouse pointer has changed. You can see it's an arrow with the capital letter A below it and a wavy line. That means now as I get close to my ellipse, which is going to be the path, watch what happens. As I get close, all of a sudden, I see a real-time preview of what that might look like if I was to click right here. Don't click quite yet because you can move around, rotate it around the outside of your ellipse to get it into the position you want. And you see that red line appear in the center. It means that your text is perfectly centered. As I go to the left, you can see it's no longer centered. I can move away from my ellipse if I want to leave a space between it and the path. I'm going to come down to about 0.25 inches and centered right there. And now I'm ready to click. When I do that, you can see now my text has moved and it fits along the path of my ellipse. So what you might want to do next is remove the ellipse. Well, that's a little bit tricky. If I was to click on the ellipse and just hit delete, watch what happens. A little bit scary. I've lost my artistic text as well. Luckily, we have Control Z or your undo button to bring that back. What I really need to do is convert this ellipse to curves so that it becomes a separate object that I can then delete. So with the ellipse selected, I can right click. I can go up to convert to curves. It now becomes a separate object that I can delete. Now there's another way to delete objects like that as well. But you can see I'm left with my artistic text, which is now its own object. Of course, I can size that down, do things with the handle, squeeze it up if I wanted to, or stretch it out. Totally up to you. And you can move it around and delete it. With it selected, let's hit our delete key to remove it, because we're going to try another method now. This time, though, our path is going to be a wavy line. So let's go to our freehand tool here, F5 on the keyboard. We'll also access this. Now let's click and drag to create a wavy line, just like that. Now it's going to get smoothed out for us by Corel. Look at that. Corel Draw smoothed it out nicely so that we've got our wavy line. And now we want to get this text fitting that path. Another method is to go to the Pick tool. With Artistic Text selected, and click right on it. I'm going to go to the center X. And I'm going to right click and hold down my right mouse button this time to drag it down towards the path. Now eventually, I'm going to see my mouse pointer in the center there turn into, see that? A crosshair with a large circle around it. When I see that, it means I'm on the path and I can release my right mouse button now. 
and see a pop-up menu that allows me to do things like move the text or copy it there, copy the properties like the fill, outline, etc. But more importantly down here is fit text to path. And when I click on that with my left mouse button, you can see now it's fitting that path. I'm going to click off of it to see what that looks like. Don't be worried about any remnants you might see. We're going to adjust this now by clicking on our actual text. And if I wanted to, I could start playing around with this. Notice for one thing, I've got this little node over here, that red node. It allows me to push it along the path until I get it exactly where I want. I can also pull it away. I can pull it underneath the path if I wanted to. And if I let go down here, that's what it's going to look like. I get that preview. I'm going to go just a little bit higher and over to the right a little bit and release. So there's my artistic text. Now remember I said you could separate it from the path. Well, I'm going to click down here. I'm going to click on the path, which is my wavy line. I see that red node, which means right now the two are together. I'm going to click again on my path. Notice that the red node disappears. So really what I've got is a converted to curves wavy line that I can hit delete now to remove that. And now I've got my artistic text left behind. I'm going to just move this down a little bit on the page towards the bottom so I can create another wavy line up above. All right, let's do that. We'll go to our freehand tool. Let's try another wavy line. This one's going to be more gradual. There we go. And another way to add artistic text is just to use your text tool. If you don't already have the text, you can go to the path and watch what happens to my mouse pointer as I come close. You can see there I've changed it from a capital letter A to an A with a wavy line under it. That means I'm on the edge. I can click and start typing in my text. So I'm just going to type in all caps. This is artistic text and it flows along the path. Now I'm going to go to my pick tool here because I want to show you another way that we can edit things. Using the property bar, we don't have to go to the node to do that. It's a nice way to get a visual, but if you need to be more precise or you want to change the effect, check out the property bar up here. First of all, we've got our text orientation. If I click this, I can go down through these options to see a real-time preview of the effect. You can see they're slightly different. Here there's no rotation of the characters, but they do still flow along the path. That one's kind of cool. I like this one. It's almost a three-dimensional effect. So I'm going to click on it to change the orientation. I can also move text away from the path or below it if I wanted to using my arrows here in the distance from path field. So I'm going to bump that up and you can see it's moving away with each click from my line. I can also adjust the horizontal. You can see over here I've got a feel for horizontal offset. Right now it's at 1.464. For me, you may have a different value in there. So we can move that to the right using the up arrow. We can move it to the left using the lower arrow. And of course, you could type in an exact value in here if you wanted. For example, I'm going to click and drag over that type 1.75 and hit my enter key to lock that in. You can see it's in the exact location of what I typed. So there we go. I click on my path. I still see the red node. I click again. I can delete it. And I'm left with my artistic text. Very cool stuff. So if you need your text to flow along a path, there's lots of applications for that. You can add the special effects when you're creating some of your projects. Having your text flow along a path can really add some visual excitement to your work. So you should be feeling comfortable now with the various methods for adding artistic text to a path. Now we're going to get into formatting our artistic text in the next lesson.